Ready! Hello everybody and welcome back to more Plants vs. Zombies, where the secret to fighting the legions of the undead is horticulture. So, we've cleared the first two worlds now. We cleared the daytime levels and the nighttime levels, so now we're off to world three. And things are gonna get interesting here. Let's begin. Oh, so this is a change of scenery. <laughs> Looks like the zombies gave up attacking your front yard. Now they're trying your backyard. And to top it all off, you can't even use your mushrooms, because they fall asleep during the day. Well, isn't that just dandy? Yep, so World 3, we're back in the daytime. Now we're in the backyard where there's a swimming pool through the middle of it. And yeah, remember how I said there was a catch last time? With all these really powerful and useful mushroom plants? Yeah, they don't work in the daytime. They're asleep. Like, we can technically still take them, and we can plant them, but they'll be asleep and they will not do anything. So I know some people still like taking Puff Shroom in the daytime, because even if it doesn't do anything, it's free, recharges quickly, and hey, it can delay the zombies slightly. I personally think that's a bad idea. The main gimmick of this world, though, is the swimming pool that cuts through the middle of the lawn. You can't put plants on the swimming pool, and that is where lily pad comes in handy. You can put lily pads on the water and then put your other plants on top of that. So it's just basically, it's slightly more expensive to put stuff on the water. However, the swimming pool lanes generally don't get attacked as much as the land lanes, so that's fine. So, take sunflower, we're gonna take lily pad, potato mine, Snow pea, repeater, walnut, and cherry bomb. Sounds like a plan. Let's rock! New world, new music, and I really like this music. Also, another small change that you may not notice. Uh, the last two worlds were all uh, five lanes. This world is six lanes. You got two lanes up here, two lanes down here, and then two lanes in the pool. So that's more stuff to plant. So yep, without puff shrooms, we're going back to the old potato mine route. I generally like to avoid building on the water until I have to, just because again, it's slightly more expensive to plant there. And generally the zombies don't attack the water for a while. So you can... <laughs> you can delay putting stuff there for a, bit, a while. There are some plants you can get that are just naturally aquatic that you can put in the water without a lily pad. But for the most part, you're going to need lily pads for all this. But yeah, so, so far so good. Not really much to this world right now. Everything's pretty basic. No new crazy zombies. Like, the new zombie for this level is just the aqua zombie. Where it's a zombie that has, like, a rubber ducky tube so they can go for the water. That is not where I wanted to plant that. I meant to put that up here to take him out. That's fine. So remember how I said I always plant uh, two two columns of sunflowers, because there are six lanes on this level and not five, that means we have two more sunflowers than usual, so we actually will get sun at a higher rate in this world than in the other uh, worlds. Which is good, because we have more lanes to put plants down and protect. It's kind of astonishing that, uh, we can effectively shut down, like, every lane just with a single snow pea. Yeah, as you can see, we haven't even seen any zombies go in the water yet. They've exclusively been on the land lanes. I guess for these shorter levels, it's probably better to use Pea Shooter rather than Repeater. But eh, I like Repeater, so... That's who I'm using. Again, because we've got uh, 12 sunflowers on this level as opposed to 10, 
we'll be able to build up repeaters more quickly. Give me all that money. Man, we got 5,000 G. That's awesome. There we go. There's our first aquatic zombie. So this is not even just an aqua zombie. That's an aqua cone zombie. Well, we can deal with him. I'm not sure how the plants are able to just float on the lily pads. Because, you know, they kind of need their roots to go down into soil. But, eh, I won't complain. All right. Another gimmick that can happen on the pool levels is during the final waves, zombies can just pop up out of the water. I think they can pop up as far as the fourth column, maybe the fifth, so you gotta watch out for that. But that's okay, we have more than enough uh, firepower to take them down. There we go, and we get a new plant, and this is easily one of my favorite and the best plants in the entire game. Oh boy, we get the squash. Squash is zombies. The squash is basically a direct upgrade of the potato mine. It costs 25 more sun, but it kind of does the same thing. It'll just one-hit kill the first zombie that reaches it. But there are a couple of differences. The main one being the squash doesn't have to charge up. You can plant the squash and he'll immediately squash. Also, whereas the potato mine can really only kill one zombie... Like, I guess you can, it can technically kill multiple zombies, but they all have to be on the exact same pixel when they touch the potato line to do it, so it'll basically only kill one. The squash is capable of killing more than one. If you've got a couple of zombies all on one square, the squash will get all of them. So I generally prefer the squash to the potato line, even if it's slightly more expensive, meaning you won't have quite as much sun at the very beginning, you'll have almost as much. And whereas the potato mine basically stops being useful after the first, like, minute, the squash is useful throughout the entire level. So, definitely recommend him. He's a great plant. Hey, want to buy an extra seed slot? It'll cost you $5,000, but you'll be able to choose eight seeds per level instead of seven. How's that sound? Yes, please. All right. What else am I spending my money on? So here we go. Football zombies came back, as well as newspaper zombies. So this is going to be a level where, uh... Remember how I said the Hypno Shroom is kind of your only way of dealing with football zombies? Well, we can't use the Hypno Shroom anymore. But now we have Squash, and Squash will do just as good of a job, if not a better one, than Hypno Shroom, because he costs less, and will just kill the football zombie in one hit, which is awesome. So, Sunflower, Lily Pad, definitely Squash, uh, Snow Pea, Repeater, Walnut, Cherry Bomb, and then I guess Pea Shooter. Again, I'm not using... I don't need Potato Mine if I have Squash, and with Chomper... Well, Chomper's just not very good. Squash has the same slow recharge that Potato Mine has, so I guess you can technically use both, but I don't really recommend it. There's not much point. So here comes the first zombie, so we put the squash down here. Now you might be wondering, hey, if the squash can just instantly kill the zombie, why wouldn't you just put him right next to the zombie? Well, that's because if I kill that zombie, more zombies will start appearing right after that. Whereas if I don't kill the zombie immediately, it'll take longer for the next zombie to appear. Generally, the next zombie will appear after a certain amount of time has passed, or after this zombie dies. So by delaying the amount of time I spend before I kill the zombie, I basically buy myself more time to build up my sunflower supply. And as you can see, boom, Squash just hopped on his head, and he dead. So yeah, Squash is very nice. Really good plant. Strongly recommend him on basically any level. I mean, he's less good on- he's not as good as on the nighttime levels just because you have Puff Shroom. But even so, like, if, you, if you're up against a football zombie, Squash can be pretty nice. He's still cheaper than Hypno Shroom, even at night, and again, the, while the idea of having a zombie fight on your side sounds great, it's honestly not nearly as useful as you might think. But I will definitely show off how you can just 
put the squash down and instantly have them squashed up. I mean, once them football zombies start coming out. Now, I'll hold off on the lily pad until we need it. Ooh, a present! Mini games unlocked. Play them from the main menu. Sometimes zombies can drop presents and they can have special rewards in them. Make sure you definitely pick those up. Ah, oh, I love me. The snow peas. The snow peas are so good. Oh, and here comes Newspaper Zombie. So you also notice Newspaper Zombie is immune to the snow peas, at least at first, because that newspaper is absorbing the, the frozen shots for him. After his newspaper is destroyed, though, you'll see now he gets affected by it. So again, zombies that are carrying something in front of them, that will act as a shield and prevent them from being frozen. That's important to remember. Otherwise, yep, this level should be pretty much same old, same old. Things aren't going to get interesting until the football zombies appear. But even then, they get crushed real quickly. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. Actually, I might even use a cherry bomb if I, if I think that would be better. Yeah, I think I will. Get rid of that bucket zombie. I wonder if football zombies are literally only going to show up in the final wave. See, normally I would put the squash right there to demonstrate it, but the thing is, if I kill the bucket zombie, I don't know if there's going to be a football zombie right after that. So, I don't want to use my squash, have a football zombie come in, and then not be able to use a squash because his he's on cooldown. So I'll just diligently build up my repeater army. Newspaper Zombie is not at all happy that we keep destroying his newspapers. It's understandable, man. Again, you'll notice that I'm building up my land lanes earlier than the water lanes, and that's again because, as you can see, far more zombies are appearing on the land lanes than in the water lanes. Having said that, because there's an aqua bucket zombie right here, I decided to put a repeater right there. I consider it, I don't even really think about what I do because I've just, I've played this enough that it's just all kind of muscle memory where I just know like, okay, in this situation, clearly this is what I'm gonna do. And as you can see, the repeaters just so effectively shut down everything, especially when accompanied by snow peas. It's like, what, what are you able to do? N nothing. You can't do anything about this. And I believe we're going to have the final huge wave up next. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. Here's the final wave. Where's the football zombie? There's football zombie. Boom. Instant death. And you'll see, Squash not only killed the football zombie, he also killed the uh, pirate captain zombie who was leading them. There we go. Beautiful. And that is one expensive plant there, isn't it? This is the Free Peter. Shoots peas in free lanes. So, you'll put this guy down, he only takes up one square, and he'll shoot a pea straight forwards in his lane, just like a pea shooter, but he'll also shoot one in the lane above him and the lane below him. Provided that there actually is a lane above and below him. So, it's a cool plant. I think it's a pretty bad one, because if you'll see the price, 325 that's a lot. That's far more expensive than any other plant we have. 
On top of which, the exact same thing that this plant does can be accomplished just by putting free pea shooters down in each of the lanes. And not only that, but doing that is cheaper and better because you can just gradually get the pea shooters instead of having to get them all in one go if that makes sense. So I consider this to be a pretty bad plant. I'm gonna use him, I'm gonna show him off, but I will not be picking him very frequently. One advantage Free Peter does have though is that it means you can attack zombies in the water lanes without needing to put down lily pads. So that is nice, but still, it's quite expensive. This also introduces a new zombie type. This is a snorkel zombie. So this will be a zombie that moves through the water and when he enters the water, he'll be submerged, and you won't be able to attack him until he pops up, and he'll only pop up when he starts eating something. So this is a level we're definitely going to want walnuts, so that way we can put a walnut on a lily pad, and the snorkel zombies will start eating that, and then we can uh, actually take them out. So, sunflower, lily pad, squash, walnut. I'll take free Peter, just to show him off. I'll take snow pea, cherry bomb, and then... Eh. I'll actually, I'm actually going to take... <laughs> potato mine. I'll take potato mine just because I know this is going to be a short level, so there's not much point in using the repeater if I have the free peter. Chomper's bad, and then again, pea shooter. I'm going to try using the free peter instead. So I'm actually going to tag team the first couple of zombies with the potato mine and the squash. Hopefully, because again, I'm going to need a lot of sun to start building free peters. They cost a lot of money. One other thing that I should point out, you cannot put potato mines on lily pads. Potato mines need soil in order to grow, and lily pads don't have any soil. So, yeah, potato mines don't work on the water lanes at all, but squash do. Another reason why I think squash are just better. I still like potato mine, don't get me wrong. I still think potato mine is a nice and useful plant. It's just, he generally gets pretty outclassed by squash. I mean, Squash only costs 25 more sun, and he's just better in every way. But hey, this way at least I get to, uh... At least I get to preserve a tiny bit more sun early on. Honestly, the only real reason I picked Potato Mine is just because I really didn't want either of the other two plants. I guess other three plants. I love the record scratch sound effect that happens if you try to use a plant that's on cooldown. Alright, here's our first free Peter. So basically now we have a pea shooter here, here, and here. So like, the only real advantage free Peter has over just planting free pea shooters is that, I guess like, if you have a massive amount of sun you can plant them more efficiently because you don't have to wait for the cooldown as much. And then the fact that they take up a third of the space. But honestly, taking up a third of the space is not really that good. In case you hadn't noticed, we've been doing pretty well on effectively shutting down the, plant, the zombies alone before we take up every slot on the lawn. So, yeah. And again, I guess... One thing about the Free Peters is technically, you, if you take Free Peters, you don't need Lily Pads. But you, you kind of still need Lily Pads. Although there there is an achievement in the game for clearing a pool level without using any aquatic plants like Lily Pads. So if you're going for that, Free Peter actually might be a very necessary plant. But again, I massively would prefer putting repeaters all over the place much better deal. Alright, there we go. Everybody's cooled off. So now we can buy more free Peters. Oh, also, I need to... I'm gonna preemptively put a walnut there for them snorkel zombies. Because the walnut is 
has a slow uh, cooldown, or has a long recharge, I guess I should say. We are able to kill Snorkel Zombies by putting Cherry Bombs that close by. Oh, this is not a super short level. Dug on it. I chose the wrong. I chose poorly. Take that, Snorkel Zombie. There we go. So as you can see, the peas are just passing right over the guy's head. Not even hitting him. you also notice I'm only putting the free Peters in these lanes. Because if I put them in the top or the bottom lane, then they're not nearly as good because they're only going to fire in two lanes. So as you can see, I'm just, like, I'm definitely thwarting all the zombies, no problem. But I'm not doing it nearly as efficiently as I would if I had been using repeaters. It's taking me longer to build these, and we're not doing as much damage. So yeah, not a fan of repeaters. This will probably be the only time I use them. I guess if I'm going for some of the achievements, or if I'm on a level where I'm forced to use them, then sure. But that doesn't happen very often. This will likely be the only time, or one of the only times, I voluntarily choose free Peters. Because, again, I want to show off every plant in the game. And then that's not to say, like, free Peters are inherently, like, awful plants. I don't think that... There are very, very few plants in this game that I consider to be just outright awful. But... Some plants are definitely better than others. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. This should be the final wave. Yep. Oh, fun. Give me you. That was not necessary. All right. Here we go. New plant time. We got a new plant, the Tangle Kelp, an aquatic plant that pulls a zombie underwater. So this is kind of like an aquatic version of the squash. It only costs 25 sun, has the same recharge, and basically the first zombie that reaches it, it'll grab it and then just drag it underwater and instant kill the zombie. It can not it can only kill one zombie at once, so it's not as good as the squash, but it, it can be useful, so... There we go. I'll, I'll definitely use it on this level. They're quite nice for taking out the snorkel zombies. It means you don't necessarily need walnuts anymore. Although, if enough snorkel zombies come out to the point where you can't use Tangle Kelp to kill all of them, because, again, Tangle Kelp has a slow cooldown, that can put things in a bit of a damper. So, Sunflower, lily pad, Squash, Tangle Kelp, Snow Pea, Repeater, and... I'll go Walnut just in case, and then Cherry Bomb. See how useful it is to have extra seed slots? Like, look at this, we can carry... <laughs> we used to only be able to take six plants on the level, but now we can take eight. Honestly, on levels where there aren't any, like, really tough zombies, the potato mine might be a better choice than the squash, if you're not planning on using him for anything else, but, yeah. I don't care. Squash is my man. is such good, relaxing music. I love it. Again, every world in this game has fantastic music. Boom, ba doom ba doom I'm gonna preemptively put a Tangle Cup down there. Because I know there will eventually be a Snorkel Zombie that arrives. And, you know, the more Tangle Cup we get down, the less overwhelmed we'll be able to be in the future. Because again, there is still that recharge on it. Actually, does 
the Tangle Cup have a slightly faster recharge than the... Hmm. I guess I never thought about it, but... I guess... I thought there were only really three recharge speeds for the plants. There was fast, slow, and then molasses. There are some plants in the game that have an even slower recharge than something like a squash or a cherry bomb. We will not be encountering those plants for a while, though. So far, so good. Again, the, I'm just laying traps in place for the inevitable snorkel zombies that arrive. And again, I'm, I'm also putting the Tangle Cup far enough down the lane that if they're just regular Aqua Zombies, we'll kill them with my, our Snow Peas before they can reach. Oh. Okay, I don't really want the Cone Zombie to get eaten by the Tangle Kelp, so I'll put a repeater down there to make sure that doesn't happen. Zombies is approaching. Okay, no, the Tangle Kelp has the same recharge as the Squash. You know, I'll be honest, thanks. There's our first Snorkel Zombie. I was wondering when he'd show up. So yeah, watch what happens when he reaches one of these Tangle Kelps. Yeah, vaulting zombies. I haven't seen you guys in a while. Thankfully, when we when we slow you down with the snow peas, there's no real chance that you can reach us. It's a good thing that the snorkel zombies don't appear at a very high rate. Otherwise, tangle cup would not be enough to keep them at bay. So in that case, if you're on a level where there's a lot of snorkel zombies, I recommend going the walnut on the lily pad. It's much more reliable even if it's not quite as fun. So Tangle Kelp looks kind of creepy. Those red eyes in the midst of all the kelp. Uh-oh. As you can see, like, even now, the, the Snorkel Zombies are coming in at a high enough rate that they're about to get rid of our last Tangle Kelp in that lane. Thankfully, Snorkel Zombies cannot be the ones that pop up out of the water. It's only going to be Aqua Zombies, Aqua Cone Zombies, or Aqua Bucket Zombies. This is still not the final wave. That's kind of nuts. So this is, yeah, so this is our first instance of a level that's, um, three huge waves instead of just two. And again, this is why, this is the perfect example of a level why repeater is so good. Because if we were using regular old pea shooters, we'd be out of room now. Because remember, each repeater would have to be two regular old pea shooters. But here, we can save space. I think I'm gonna preemptively start putting down walnut platforms. Because 
we, we need more firepower in the water. Yeah, oftentimes in Plants vs. Zombies, there's more than one way to do something. Ah, I did not think I clicked out of the window. So now what I think is going to happen... Yeah, here's the final wave. Some a zombie... Yep, a zombie popped up behind the walnut because they're allowed to do that, apparently. I also could have used the Tangle Kelp there, but eh, squash to the rescue! What is this? A car key? You found Crazy Dave's car key! Now you can visit Crazy Dave's shop! Okay. Hey! You found my car key! You know what that means! Crazy Dave's Twiddly Dinkies is open for business! Have a look! See if you can't find something you like! So yeah, here's the shop of the game where we use the bulk of our money. So we've got... <laughs> <laughs> this extra wait, this extra seed slot will let you choose nine plants per level, but that's twenty thousand dollars, so that's kind of rough. <laughs> These pool cleaners add an extra line of defense on levels with a pool, so you may have noticed that on these pool levels there are no lawnmowers on the pool lanes, which makes sense. You don't put lawnmowers in the pool. This is where the pool cleaners come in handy. If we buy them, it'll basically put lawnmowers in the pool, except they'll be pool cleaners. But they do the exact same thing. If a zombie reaches the end of the pool lane, pool cleaner will activate, kill all the zombies in the lane, and then disappear, and then they'll, if they get by again, then that's where they'll be able to eat your brains and make you lose the level. <laughs> this garden raid takes out the first zombie that steps on it. It lasts for free levels. It's cheap. But I never really use the rake, just because it appears on a random lane. The first zombie that appears is not even likely to be in the rake lane, and you can effortlessly take out the first zombies with, again, either potato mines or squash. Then down here we have special bonus plants. Our prices are unbelievable! Special bonus plants that you can only get by purchasing them at the shop, and they cost $5,000. So first we have <laughs> Gatling Pea. Plant these on your repeaters to turn them into Gatling Peas. Gatling Peas shoot four peas at a time. So Gatling Pea basically makes a repeater twice as good. This is not nearly as good of an upgrade as the repeater is for the pea shooter, because how this works is you basically need to take the repeater as one slot, but then you need to take the Gatling Pea as a second slot. The Gatling Pea is an upgrade plant, so you need the repeater in order to use the Gatling Pea. The Gatling Pea is more expensive than planting a repeater, and basically it accomplishes the exact same thing as just planting another repeater. And unlike planting a bunch of regular old pea shooters, you're not really ever going to run out of room to the point where you're like, oh man, I'm out of room and I have all these repeaters, I wish I could upgrade them. Like, by the time you fill your lawn with repeaters, the level will be over. So it's just not a very good upgrade. On top of which, the, um... Every single plant that Crazy Dave sells you has the molasses slow recharge, where it takes basically a full minute for the plant to recharge, so you can't even plant that many of them. So they're not very good. And then this is the twin sunflower. Plant these on your sunflowers to turn them into twin sunflowers. Twin sunflowers give twice as much sun as a sunflower. Basically the same problem that the Gatling Pea. You need to take an extra slot for the twin sunflower in addition to the sunflower. It costs way more to plant to upgrade to a twin sunflower than to just plant a regular sunflower. It has a super slow recharge. Not very good. So out of these, so I'm just going to buy the pool cleaners. And I'm going to save my money for better things in the future. Let's go to the next level now. Funny thing about the zombie process. Sometimes it makes him come out real little. Real little and real me. Defend your shins. So this is a weird minigame level. So all the zombies on this level will be really tiny. So I think they have less HP, but there's going to be a lot more of them. And it's a conveyor belt level. The little zombies, I think, are also faster. So, yeah, I gotta watch out for that. <laughs> now, this is one level where it actually can help to get... This is one level where it can help to get free feeders. But again, I don't voluntarily take the free feeders.
This is also a level where, you'll remember the Explode Detonator achievement is blow up 10 zombies with a single cherry bomb. I don't know if it's the same, but in the iPhone version, they specified it had to be 10 full-sized zombies. Because on this level, it's very easy to use a cherry bomb to blow up a huge amount of tiny zombies, but that does not count towards the Explode Detonator achievement. As, as, wow. They, the game is being very stingy with the plants that it's giving me. Actually, can you even get free Peters on this level? I'm actually not sure. Yes, yeah, so the tiny zombies. Less HP, but faster. Thank goodness we have walnuts. Just realized I should plant the walnuts here. Because that way, if zombies pop up out of the water from the final wave, they still will get stopped by the walnut. And cherry bombs can hit the snorkel zombies even when they're underwater, which is very nice. Man, we're not getting that many pea plants. But we are getting a lot of cherry bombs, which is great. Okay, I, I already know that this walnut's about to die. I was ready to replant. Gonna point a walnut down there. Just because, again, I know that the, on the final huge wave there can be a bunch of zombies that pop up out of the sea. I should probably put more pea shooters in the water, shouldn't I? But again, the water lanes just don't get nearly as many zombies on them as the land lanes. Oh no, you don't. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. Is this the final lane? Or the final wave? Get it? Final wave? Oh, that wasn't as many zombies that popped up as I thought there was going to be. And there we go! Two, two well-placed cherry bombs, and that defeats everybody else. Alright. And here we get a fun new plant. We get the jalapeno! Destroys an entire lane of zombies. So this is kind of like an alternate version of the cherry bomb. The cherry bomb basically insta-kills any zombie in a free-by-free -free area. The jalapeno just insta-kills every single zombie in a lane. And it's slightly cheaper as well. So yeah, that's gonna be a fun plant to use, but we're out of time for today. Although, one weird thing, the jalapeno right here is red. At least in my experience, jalapenos are almost always green. So, guess that one's just pretty ripe, huh? Yep, yeah, but we're out of time for today. That's the first five levels of the pool. So next time we'll be finishing up the pool world and we'll be getting some interesting plants to take advantage of and we'll be encountering some rather tough new zombies to deal with. Yeah, the zombies are about to ramp up in difficulty. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time. Well, I guess I already told you what will be in store for us next time. It's going to be a fun time. We also unlocked these mini games over here. Which we could play, but I'm going to hold off on the minigames until I think after we're done with Adventure Mode. Because there's actually quite a few modes of play here. we got Adventure Mode, Minigames, Puzzle, and Survival. Four different modes, and we'll be showing all of them off. This is going to be a pretty extensive Let's Play. Even if the story mode in this game isn't particularly long, there's plenty of content to be had. And I look forward to exploring every last bit of it. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope you tune in for the next episode. And until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.